it matters what, when, and how you feed yourself. I mean, that's what my trainer told me, right? He said, it matters what you eat, and it matters when you eat, and it matters how you eat. And so I think the same here is true. If I'm supposed to be conformed into the image of the Son of God, then I need to follow the pattern of what, when, how he ate, how he took in, how he was replenished or nourished kind of himself. And even outside of himself, looking at the story of Jesus, even outside of that, I just see that he was walking into the synagogues and he was reciting scripture. So I don't have those moments where he was, I see him sitting down reading the scroll. I don't have him sitting in the synagogue necessarily listening to the word of God that in that moment would have just been the Old Testament because the New Testament was really written about him and the things that were to come after him. So that Old Testament writing, I don't see a lot of instances where he's sitting and reading that or having that read to him, but we see him quoting that. And so we know for him to be able to quote it, he had at some point taken that into himself. And this is what David said in Psalm 119 about that process. 119 verse 9 says this, How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. The Bible is God's word. The Bible is God's word. We believe that God ordained his word, the scriptures, through the works and through the hand of of men... To put this together, there were about 40 authors, 66 books put together over a length of time that you and I can now hold in our hand, either in a printed version or maybe even an electronic version, and we can read the words of God. And what David tells us here and what we see Jesus reciting scripture is that we are to take God's word into our lives. We're supposed to read God's word. It's not enough just to sit here on Sundays And let me just kind of say, hey, here's three or four or five scriptures that are kind of in tune with the topic we're talking about today. You personally, I personally, away from this moment, need to be reading and memorizing and reciting the words of God. I I, I tweeted this recently, but I, I ran across this where a guy said that scripture memorization just gives the Holy Spirit a vocabulary in your life. Now, I realize that you think scripture memorization, if you grew up in the church like me, you think it's just something to get Bible bucks in children's church. But this is something far greater. It's saying, I want to take God's word and try to read it and memorize it and get it into my life and get it into my head and get it into my heart so that when I'm facing things, I can immediately recall those words of God that are applicable to this situation. And I know that's a daunting task because you go, man, the Bible's huge. Where do I even start? Anywhere. Anywhere. Just start somewhere. Just start reading the words that are in red in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see the words that Jesus spoke and find some of those words. Go and read some of the Proverbs or some of the Psalms that are a little more bite-sized chunks that you can take and memorize and read through them however you choose to do that. And just take those words into your life because David says it's important for you to do that because that's what actually helps keep you from sinning. Now, maybe that's your goal. Maybe your goal in life is, I just want to sin less. That's a pretty good goal. I don't think that's a bad goal. But David says here, if you want to really accomplish that goal, it's bigger than just trying to be better in the moment. It's about preparing for the moment by putting God's word in your heart, giving the Holy Spirit a vocabulary when you get into a moment where it needs the words of God to speak to a situation. But if you're anything like me, Reading the Bible sometimes is hard. I mean, sometimes I don't know what to read. And sometimes I don't know, I don't want to read. I'll admit that. And sometimes when I read something, I don't know what I just read. I, I don't understand what I just read. And so sometimes when I'm reading, I'm trying to figure out what it is that I just read that God would, might be saying to me. What does that mean? How do I apply that to my life? I ran across a resource really recent uh, that, that revolutionized the way that I'm reading the Bible. I actually referenced a book the first Sunday of January called The Divine Mentor. It's by Pastor Wayne Cordero. He's a pastor out in Hawaii. The Divine Mentor is the book if you want to pick it up. It's a great book. won't take you a long time to read it. He talks about the idea that Scripture can be seen as people, as characters in God's Word, as, as individuals, and how those people can actually mentor you. They can serve as your coach. 
Because they're walking through situations in those stories that you're walking through now, and you can see how did God interact with them, how did they respond, what things did they do well, what things did they not do well. And so he says you can use those people as your mentors. But in that book, he talks about something called soaping. SOAP, S-O-A-P, and here's what it stands for. It stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. And here's what this looks like. You just read through any passage of Scripture that you want to read through. Maybe you have a Bible reading program already. There's something that you're reading through. Maybe you have a devotional guide. Whatever it is that you're choosing to do, if you don't have anything, you don't even know where to start, I would encourage you to go to Bible.com. Bible.com. It sounds simple. What it is, this is a resource created by a church out in Oklahoma. And they have, excuse me, they have reading plans that, on all kinds of different things. It's the whole Bible. It's parts of the Bible. It's topics. So you can read in the month of February. You can read about love. You can read about marriage. You can read about dating. You can read through the whole Bible by reading, you know, a chapter or two or a couple of chapters a day. You can read part of the Bible. You can read all the New Testament. You can just read the Gospels. You can have a 30-day reading plan or a 7-day reading plan. You can read about money and managing money. You can read about parenting. You can read about all kinds of different things. They have tons and tons of it. Bible.com, you can start there. But you read anything you want to do, and you can still soak. And here's what you do. You read any passage. Maybe it's a chapter. Maybe it's three or four verses. And then... You take out a journal. It can be on your computer. For me, what's worked best is to take a pen and this journal, this little moleskin journal you can pick up just, uh, just about anywhere, and you then take in that journal and write it out as S-O-A-P. So what I've got here is I've got S-O-A-P. And what you do is you just write out one verse that you read, something that spoke to you. So when I'm reading through Bible.com, when I'm reading that app on my phone, because they have apps as well, I'm reading that app. If I come across a scripture, one individual scripture in that whole reading of the day that I really like or really spoke to me or I've got questions about it, I just highlight it. I click on it and make it yellow so that I can come back to it later. And then I write it down. So let me just read to you something that I wrote. So the other day on February the 9th, I wrote out 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6, and this is what it says. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforts us... By the coming of Titus. Titus is a, another guy. This is uh, Paul writing here to the church in Corinth, and he's talking to them about Titus, this brother that came to them. And he says, listen, he com God comforts people. He comforted us when you sent Titus to us. And that's all I wrote. I just wrote that part, by the coming of Titus. So then I make an observation about something that I just, wrote, I just read. And my observation that day was God brings others into our lives to bring comfort when we need flesh and blood there to do so. It's amazing to have the presence of God and, and when, we're, when we need comfort and when we need something. But sometimes, don't you just need some flesh and blood there to do it? You just need somebody that will hug you, somebody that will cry with you, somebody that will hold your hand, somebody that will empathize with you, that will listen to you. And so what my observation about that passage was is that God brings others into our lives to bring comfort when we need flesh and blood there to do so. And then you write out an application. And so the scripture was here, the observation was here, and now my application is the largest part of the text. It's not on every page, but on this page it was, and here's what I wrote. I have to be aware of the people that God is bringing into my life during seasons where comfort is needed. Conversely, for me, God may also be placing me into the lives of others because of what they're going through in that moment. The principle is so true that God also brings people into our lives for encouragement, correction, fellowship, and celebration. That was my application. When I read that, I thought, man, they needed comfort, and the church sent Titus to them, and God used Titus to bring encouragement and comfort to them. My observation was that God does that, and my application is that I want to be aware when God is sending people into my life and what the role is that they play in my life, and I also want to be aware when God's putting me into people's lives so that I can know how I might best serve them. And then you write out a prayer. Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. And here was my really short prayer that day. Lord, Help surround me with the people you know I'll need when I'll need them. And help me be that person for others. Amen. It took me about four or five minutes just to do all of this. I just wrote it out. I have terrible handwriting. You probably couldn't read it if you stood here. But man, I just, I was reading that, that verse. I read a whole chapter there. I read all of 2 Corinthians 7, but I just wrote that one verse. And then I made an observation about it. Then I made an application. Then I made a prayer. I'm going to do one more for you. This is what I wrote on February the 11th. Just two days after that, this is what I wrote. Psalm 106, verses 12 and 13. I chose to do two verses that day. Then they believed his words, and they sang his praise. But they soon forgot his works, 
and they did not wait for his counsel. And this is what I observed about that passage. Truly believing brings praising. Forgetting brings avoidance, and it causes me to rush. And here was my application for me. This pendulum swings, uh, the, the pendulum swing of believing, not just in my, in my mind, but through my actions, always pushes me towards praise. When I'm truly believing God, not just in my head, but in my actions, and my life bears out that I'm believing in God, it always results in praise for me. It always results in me praying my worship, like we talked about early, lifting up, declaring the goodness of God, because I'm more aware of the things that I need to be praising God about. But this is what I wrote. But when I forget not just in my mind, but in my actions. I get in a hurry. I begin reacting to everything instead of intentionally praising God. And I avoid the counsel of the Lord. I avoid the wisdom of God, either through him personally, through his word, or through other people. I avoid that. That's for me personally. And here's the prayer that I wrote out. Lord, help me believe both in word and deed and praise you with my life. And let me not neglect your counsel out of my hurried life that causes me to forget who you are and what you've done for me. Amen. That's what I wrote. Now, here's what we're going to give you today when you leave. We're going to give you a soap guide. And on the inside cover, it has some information about what soaping is and how you might be able to utilize it. You can take this and just make it a bookmark in your Bible or put it somewhere where you won't forget it. There are two different things that you can read. In the inside, it's soap by theme, and it starts tomorrow, February 16th. Proverbs 12, 18, it has one verse related to a theme. So in the month of February, you have some verses here on marriage and then some verses on communication. Some of you might just want to start there, okay? Then salvation. Then in March, it starts talking about sin and grace and temptation and encouragement and relationships and trust. And so it walks all the way through April the 13th. So for about two months or so, uh, we've got some, some guides there if you want to read by theme. Or you can read, flip it over on the back and you can read it by book. And for the most part, this is one chapter a day. And so tomorrow's chapter would be James chapter 4. And you just kind of walk through all the way to April 13th, and you're reading different chapters each day. And out of that chapter, you just select one verse that you want to soap about. Maybe it's a journal. Maybe you could do it on your computer. Maybe you type it out on your phone or your tablet, whatever you choose to do. I know that sounds difficult for some of you, but I'm telling you, it takes about three or four extra minutes a day, but it causes you to engage the word of God. I know some of our staff has really started doing this. I'm telling you, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a pastor, it has revolutionized the way that I interact with God's word. 